Um, hello, my name is Matthew, and I read The Art of Poetry by Horace, and I read it for a few reasons. Uh, the first is Steve Donahue made a terrific response video to my discussion about reading for pleasure, and he talks about Horace. Uh, I'll leave a link to Steve's video. It's entertaining and instructive. Uh, but also, I've been uh, reading Horace all year. It's been one of my bedside books, and I happen to have a copy of The Art of Poetry. And also, um, The Art of Poetry in particular uh, has been a fortuitous reading experience because I'm also reading The Life of Samuel Johnson by James Boswell, and it's evident that Dr. Johnson was reading Horace and studying Horace and influenced by Horace. And I'm noticing um, connections that I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, how often I can tell when Dr. Johnson uh, is thinking about Horace. It's really interesting. Uh, the art of poetry itself is an instructive poem on how to um, tell a good poem or write a good poem, um, write good literature, or to tell an interesting story. What, what are the rules or guidelines to keeping your audience interested and captivated? And it's impressive how um, these pragmatic um, points that Horace makes uh, relate so directly to um, the time that he was writing it. So um, it's apparent that all of this makes sense in the literary landscape that Horace was writing in ancient Rome. Um, what, makes it, what makes it impressive is that it is still immediately relatable and uh, meaningful in modern day times. I, reading it today is just as affecting as it must have been at the time that it was written. And they really are just these golden guidelines to keep in mind, um, not just if you're writing a poem or a novel, but just speaking to somebody. When you're telling somebody a story, how do you go about doing it? And it's things like, um, Horace would say, don't write a five-act play if it doesn't have to be. Don't have the gods come in on the third at the conclusion of the story if they don't need to be there. And so, you know, the, the ideas of being succinct, don't tell a longer story than it has to be. Um, make sure that your story is rewarding. Don't bring some wild card at the very end of your tale that nullifies or wastes the time of the reader all the way up until that point. Uh, it talks about the, the authenticity that still needs to be there when you're being imaginative. And he gives an example of, don't have a child speak with the voice of an old man. Uh, and then also broader topics like, um, look in the past, read the great writers. So at the time he was talking about um, the importance of reading the ancient Greeks, the, the epics and the plays, read, read Homer and Euripides and Sophocles and study them and see what they were doing that worked. Why were they so powerful and learn from it. But he also talks about being creative and inventive. So don't just copy the past. You can make up new words if you have to, which is something, um, there's a little light bulb moment because Dr. Johnson mentions the same exact thing. Um, so yeah, make up words if you have to, be inventive, be creative, come up with new ideas and do it sparingly because you, you still have to keep some sort of framework for the audience to relate to and be able to enjoy easily. It's really interesting. 
I'll read the portion about um, uh, reading for entertainment and instruction. And my translation is by David Ferry. Poetry wants to instruct or else to delight, or better still, to delight and instruct at once. As for instruction, make it succinct so the mind can quickly seize on what has being taught and hold it. Every superfluous word spills out of a full mind. As for delight and what you invent, stay close to actuality. Your fable shouldn't feel free to ask your audience to credit just anything whatsoever, no matter what. Produce, produce no human babies from monsters' bellies. It's great. And what I love about this poem is it's, it's saying that a good piece of literary work is going to entertain and delight. That's the subject matter of the poem. And it's self-referential because the poem itself is entertaining and instructive. And I love the idea of Horace sitting down and saying, like, not only am I going to write a poem about being entertaining and instructive, but the poem itself is going to do that. It's almost like a ninja move or like a really bold, confident thing to do. Um, and to pull it off and to, to make it work where you can just read it and enjoy it. You don't have to be a writer um, of great literature or um, even someone who is a storyteller at a dinner table. Um, it's, it's meant for your private hours and your social time. It's amazing. Um, I don't know why Horace is so good. It, it's, there's something very special in his voice. He has a way of uh, talking to you. Um, <clears throat> so I'll end it there. This is the art of poetry. Um, it was enjoyable. It's been extremely, um, very, it's, it's been extremely telling to read this at the same time as the life of Samuel Johnson. There, there's so many things that um, have been matching up and has added to that reading experience, uh, which I'll talk about, I guess, tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> so that's it. Uh, let me know if you've read The Art of Poetry, The Ars Poetica, uh, or anything by Horace. I'd love to know. Um, so leave a comment if you would like, and thank you for watching.